Well, let's call the meeting to order. Six o'clock. Where's your gavel? Uh, um, welcome. I guess Bill was here for the last, for the last meeting, but welcome, Christy, to thank you. Bill, your first whole meetings. Thank you for being here. So um, you don't have to be in an empty room. That's right. I would feel pretty lonely up here if you weren't here. <laughs> Um, so I'm going to start with additions or changes to the agenda. I have a couple. Um, one is to um, change the 625 item from East Calis Dam decommissioning update to East Calis Dam removal update is the proper terminology. Um, and then at the end of the administrative uh, section here we will um, discuss the petition that the select board received this afternoon um, and make a plan for um, moving forward with the um, scheduling an election. Uh, with, oh, yeah. East Callis, what was it? Instead East of decommissioning? What? Removal. Removal, thank you. I couldn't find it. <laughs> And that was pointed out to us that because it's not a functioning dam, there's nothing to decommission. We're just removing it. Um, we, everybody, hopefully had a chance to look, at least George and I who were at the meeting, and Bill was at the 17th, um, to approve the June 10th and June 17th meetings. Um, I guess we should maybe take them separately since Bill was at one and not the other. Sure. Um, so does anyone want to make a motion to approve the June 10th meeting minutes? Uh, I'll move to uh, move, yeah, I'll make a motion to move the June 10th. Or make a motion to approve June 10th. However, however the words work, I'm still working <laughs> on the words. My brain is on vacation mode still. Uh, does anyone want a second? I can yes. second it, although I cannot vote on it. Right. <laughs> you can second it. Um, I think Bill was here for most of that meeting. That was the June 10th. Because mm, that was when he was, right. that was, yeah, when so he was appointed. Right. So you okay. have a majority, a quorum. Yes. <clears throat> Any additions or changes to that, those minutes? All in favor? No, yeah. Aye. <laughs> Aye. <Bill>. Aye. <laughs> Great. Does somebody want to move the June 17th minutes? I will move the June 17th minutes. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I have to catch on. Aye. Aye. Yes. Um, the June 10th. It's three in favor, zero opposed, one abstention. Yes. You got it. And the June 17th, who just did that? Who made um, that motion? Jordan? Christy. Oh, Christy, I'm Jordan sorry. Jordan seconded. I can only do one thing at a time. <laughs> and everybody loved those minutes. <laughs> um, and... Did you vote? And yes, okay. they passed. Okay, and uh, what was it? So it was Jordan, Bill, and I. We were the ones at that meeting. So. But anyone can. Can vote anyone vote? Oh, you can approve also. All right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Everybody right. did. Four to zero. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, and then, I think Christy yeah. and Bill, you're both up to speed on our process with the board orders. So those were in the folder. Um, and we've all reviewed them. I'll take a motion to approve board orders. Uh, I've, yeah, I'll, I've reviewed those and would make a motion. It sounds like Bill will second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. 
Um, we have also just to note yeah. on that, since I can't get signatures from Jordan or Bill, oh, yeah. I'm going to be sending you an email with um, a recommendation to send me an email documenting your approval, and then we can get those paid. Okay. Okay. Um, we have in the folder a side letter agreement with the labor union um, regarding the assistant road foreman position. It's almost identical to the one we approved. Yeah. That there is a, a typo um, in one of the bullets. The so number three should read um, have the position of assistant road foreman. Assistant is not included, but I've added that to the, to the version that will be signed. Okay. Any other, any questions on that? Somebody want to? No. Want to make a motion, Jordan? Sure. <laughs> I'll uh, uh, motion to approve the side letter uh, with the labor union uh, regarding the creation of assistant road foreman uh, position um, as presented by Kari. Without changes. Is there a second? I will second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Perfect. Um, we the, Do we need to authorize somebody to sign that? Is, is that? Yeah, it, it should be you, Jordan, because your name is already included on it. So I'll sign that as soon as I'm uh, back. I'll be back in town. Thursday or Friday. I, I may not be back in time in Friday afternoon, but that's fine. Okay. Great. Um, the swim fund is a separate Vanguard investment account. Yeah. So um, I learned a little bit about this. Like, there was a uh, GoFundMe fundraiser set up for the swim fund, swim committee, a while back, and they decided to park that money into a uh, investment account with Vanguard. And I believe that it acts as an endowment. It's there to create um, interest and be built upon. Currently only has $6,000 on it, but um, Sandra, the former treasurer, is the signatory. It'd be good to get that updated. Great. So uh, we are looking for a motion to authorize Kari to be a signatory on the Swim Fund Vanguard account. A second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Um, Harris Rowan is interested in um, a three year term expiring June 2027 on the Trails Committee. I say anything? <clears throat> um, is Tom Blatchley is the, the, tra the okay, Trails Tom's Chair, here. is on. Oh, great. Uh, I'm here via Zoom because I got exposed to someone with COVID, so didn't want to take the risk of infecting anyone. Thank you. Fingers crossed for you. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, uh, so um, we had two uh, members of the Trails uh, Committee who did not want to run for another term. And at our annual meeting, uh, lo and behold, someone showed up, Harris Rowan. And so we uh, interviewed him. And uh, the, the consensus was he would be a great candidate for the, for the committee. So I'm here to endorse his uh, selection. And we're hoping we've got a few more uh, prospects out there who I haven't talked to yet. Hopefully, we'll be able to fill the other. Uh, seat soon as well. Great. Somebody well, that, come in. Thank you, Tom, for for doing the interview and and the recommendation. I'd uh, make a motion to uh, appoint Harris Rowan to uh, to the Trails Committee for for Tom's recommendation. I'll second that. All in favor. Hi. 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 Great. Yay. Okay. 
Thank you, sir. Thank you, Tom. <laughs> I'll just say, I mean, oh, okay. yeah, I just moved back to Dallas. I also lived here a bunch of years ago. Uh, and I'm a forester by vocation and a hiker by avocation. So uh, I was really, you know, interested in the trails committee and kind of contributing to the community that way. So thank you. Terrific. Thank, thank you. you. As you know, welcome. Yeah. yeah, welcome. I love the callous trails and really appreciate all the work the trails committee <laughs> does to create and maintain Thank them. You. It's a wonderful resource for the town. Thank you. Well, it's a labor of love. We enjoy working on the trails a great deal. It's great. Great. Okay, well, thank you, and um, welcome, Harris. Uh, we're looking forward to working with you on the committee. Thanks. Thanks, Tom. Yeah. Thanks, Tom. Take care. Thanks, Tom. Hey, take care. Wonderful. Um, contract with Central Vermont Humane Society. Barbara, you want to give us yeah, This is an annual contract. You guys signed it this time last year. I will be honest, I did not study it. It's been in your Google folder, so I trusted you were studying it. And so if you guys want to make any changes or additions we need to know, if you approve it as is, then if you would authorize someone to sign it, I've got a copy here, and if it's somebody in this building, they can sign it tonight. If you appoint Kari or somebody else, we'll get signed and off to them. Barbara, did you say it was the same as last year's? I, I mean, what I said was that I didn't study it and compare it to last year's. It was okay. in the select board Google folder. Yeah, no, I, I have it. It was there for you guys to study. And, sorry. It's a document that seems to get signed every year, and I don't it, pretty I don't much know if anyone has ever studied it. Pro forma. Yeah. Right. The, 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 I know the $100 is the same. Yeah. Okay. I didn't compare them side by side, <laughs> but I didn't see anything, <laughs> any red flags. <laughs> Yeah. No, yeah, no, it, it looked pretty straightforward to me for sure. Um, and nothing, it's a very comprehensive contract. <laughs> for, it sure is. Uh, uh, but it, it, it didn't, nothing stood out to me. So I'm, I'm happy to uh, make a motion to accept it as is uh, and authorizing uh, Kari to sign it or Jamie, if you want to sign it, does anybody have a preference? Maybe just Jamie. Doesn't matter to me. It might as well be me. Sure. All right, Jamie. Okay. Does anyone want to okay. second? So I'll second the motion to approve the agreement and authorize Jamie to sign it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And, and so I'll just say that tomorrow I'll get the signed copy off back to the Central Vermont Humane Society, Humane Society and I see Buffy's on. So Buffy, I'll send it to you too. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> um, the select board will be holding a joint meeting with the Development Review Board on July 15th at 7 p.m. Do you want to say anything yeah, about that? Um, sure. Uh, so uh, this was uh, requested by the the DRB and and kind of jointly, um, you know, desired by by both boards. The uh, idea is to um, to try to work a little bit more closely through dialogues about you know future future appointments. Um, it's going to be technically a special meeting of the select board. Um, where we're playing host um, to the uh, PRB, uh, but it's going to be the only topic uh, for discussion, um, and we won't be conducting any business. Uh, the other um, element of it to kind of help promote kind of a free dialogue between uh, board members, um, uh, it's going to be moderated by Gus Seeley. Um, so uh, for those who are uh, interested in uh attending that um it'll be at the town hall on on july 15th um it'll be mostly a dialogue between board members but there will uh, be time um um as it is appropriate for uh for the for the public to also uh provide um 
uh, input as well. So that's that's that. I have two questions, yeah. if I may. So, Jordan, is this meeting confirmed? Yeah. I haven't seen it confirmed on email. Is it confirmed? Yeah, sorry, Barbara. I, it's been kind of hard to follow up. But also, all select board members and DRB members um, can um, can do it. And and very graciously, Rose has offered to uh, to keep minutes for it. <laughs> um, uh, so it is confirmed um, as long as there isn't a conflict with town hall, which it doesn't look like there is. Um, so if you could um, schedule uh, Orca for that meeting, that would be great. Gus Selig is, um, has notes on uh, kind of drafting the talking points um, and is going to be circulating an agenda soon, uh, hopefully. So I'll be trying to work with him to follow up on that and get that to you so that as soon as I have that, we can circulate a warning, uh, right. an official warning for it. Thank you, because I, I emailed you today to ask about Orca. So you answered my question. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yep. No, and you'll find an email tomorrow about that. So sorry for the delayed response. No, 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 that's good. I just sent it to you today. That's perfect. Thank you. Perfect. Um, the added agenda item, um, the select board received a um, petition this afternoon. Um, we had two select board members resign a month ago or so mm -hmm. um, and put out an application uh, request for folks who wanted to join, interviewed the three candidates who were interested, um, all three wonderful candidates, appointed Christy and Bill, um, and uh, the, our plan was to they serve until there's a, a, a select board election for those seats. Um, we talked about having that happen in March when the select board elections usually are. Um, this petition requests we hold one uh, sooner. Um, and so we've been researching, Barbara and Tegan mostly, uh, this afternoon to figure out the details on that. Do you want to? Yeah, so the details are when uh, a member of the town submits a petition with at least 5% of the voters signing this petition, um, that petition must be honored. We have to hold that vote or that question within 60 days of receiving um, the signatures. 60 days of receiving the signatures is late August, which means that within that 60 days, we have the primary date. So it would make it much easier for all parties involved if we just piggybacked and used that August primary date when we're already holding an election here to do that election. Uh, so we will need to draft a warning. I will work with you all to get that done. The election would need to be warned between the 4th and the 14th um, of July. So we could, it could be signed at the July 8th select board meeting. We don't need to hurry or hold a special meeting to get it done. Uh, I haven't gotten confirmation of this yet, but when there are candidates, when you're voting for an office, uh, it, the candidates need to have their consent of candidate and their signatures in the sixth Monday before the election, which is two weeks from today. So we would have, I would probably put out the call tomorrow and Barbara and I would work on advertising it all over the place as well as we could. Um, and candidates would need to get everything into us by five o'clock on Monday, the July 8th. July 8th, yes, July 8th. Um, I think that sort of wraps that up, unless you have more to add to it. Now, is there any way to, but so uh, do we have to be careful of like how we, how we coordinate um, that with the petitioners, I guess, to get like uh, an agreement on utilizing that particular date? Was Did I understand you correctly? And there's like a conflict between our timeline and responding to the petition and coordinating for including it with the primary? No, there's no conflict. Actually, it's, it slots right oh, okay. in very nicely. I wouldn't have minded if we got a petition like last Wednesday, so we will be three more days. But other than that, no, this, this should work well. And once they submit the petition, it's up to us to run everything. Um, it can be done as a meeting or as just an Australian ballot, but because we typically vote for select board members through Australian ballot, we were advised to just do what we normally do as a town and do so. 
we will have to print an, uh, a ballot to go with all the ballots for the primary. Are there rules around, or discussion to be had around whether or not we mail ballots? These, uh, I was told today that these are only mailed by request, the August primary ballot, so these will also only be mailed by request. So to you, do you know, will the winners of this election hold those seats until March or until the expiration of the I have not learned that piece yet. Again, we learned this at 1, 1.30 this afternoon, and we called everyone to ask this question, and like a couple of them got back to us at the very end of the day, so we're, we're squeezing information, but we'll be sure to make sure we know more and that we let you all know. So uh, if... If I could, I'd just add like one more statement, and then if anybody has, uh, there's a, also a point of clarification at the end of it. Tegan, <laughs> um, so maybe you know the answer to this. So, um, I, I guess my my statement will be, you know, I think um, yeah, this. Well, I don't know. I don't know what the motives are for uh, for kind of organizing around this particular petition. I I don't have any particular objection to it. I think you know, elections are always the most desirable way to uh, to try to. Uh, get people into into office uh, who are representative of the constituency. Um, you know, I think the motives for the select board to move quickly on on appointments through this last round um, were relative to uh, the scope of work that we have to do um, and uh, some known uh, travel schedules that would make it really difficult and and a somewhat surprise in an abrupt resignation for you know personal reasons for for previous select board members which um were were totally valid and and worth honoring um so i you know i think trying to just work through tonight's administrative approvals is indicative enough of how challenging it would have been uh to <laughs> to work through conducting business uh in in the absence of our former select board members um um so that was that was the primary motive of, of really trying to uh call call for uh for appointments um and to take action swiftly on making appointments so that we could continue to conduct business as it as a community and as a town, um, uh, while while we were working through those schedules. So, with that, my clarif clarifying question, I guess, Tegan, maybe that you had gotten some guidance on this. Um, this petition to call for uh, uh, call to call to fill these sections does that in any way kind of preclude um the uh individuals that were the appointees chris uh christy and bill from serving continuing to serve um in their interim role uh, as appointed until that election no i don't i don't believe so the the statute that uh joe the attorney quoted to us is the one that says if select board the select board appoints members when you know people resign or can no longer that appointment will hold until okay. the next election. So the appointments okay. you all made are still good. You all can still keep serving for the next month and a half. Uh, and you are more than welcome to turn in your paperwork. <laughs> or... Great. Thank you uh, for that, Tegan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great, we are on to public comment. Is there anyone here who's looking to make public comment on an item that's not later on the agenda. I'm Rose Pelchuk. My head is reeling about this petition thing. I'm just, I'm, I'm sitting here shocked and stunned. To me, it feels like some people in town are unhappy and they're kind of undermining the work of the select board, diminishing your value or your capacity or your everything for these three wonderful people that stepped up to serve our town. And my question the whole time I'm sitting here for Tegan is, just because someone submits a petition, can the town like say, okay, thanks for sending us your petition and not acting on the petition, and you're shaking your head, no. But I just, I just needed to get that off my chest. I mean, I think it's so wrong. 
If people really wanted to serve, why didn't they step up? And maybe they just, you know, I, I just think it's wrong and, and I'm, I'm hurt and um, I feel bad. And I just want to say that. And so Christy and Bill and Jared, thank you so much for doing the work of the town. I really appreciate it. Any other public comment? Okay. Uh, let's move on to the East Callis Dam removal update. We have some folks here from Friends of the Winooski. Do you want to jump in and <laughs> give sure. us some? Are we sitting in an okay place? Is I think so. Do you yeah, want to move forward? <laughs> <laughs> Just making sure that you get in the witness chair. <laughs> we can see you and hear you, so okay. we're good. Great. Uh, so I'm Michelle Braun. I'm the executive director of Friends of the Winooski River, and I have Sam Puttycomb, uh, one of our project managers. And um, we are working on uh, the East Callis Dam, and I'll Start back at the flood last year, the um, homeowners contacted us um, when the dam was damaged um, by the flooding and we um, came out and take a look at it. Um, we have a cooperative agreement with U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service um, that provides us with funding to work on um, projects that benefit um, aquatic organism passage, so that remove barriers from <coughs> streams so that um, fish and turtles and everybody who wants to be able to move up and down the stream can do so. Um, one thing that happened, one thing that has happened with dams in Vermont in the last several years is the regulations have, cha have changed a lot. And it's been a sort of a gradual phasing in of how the dam safety program works. So um, dam owners now need to pay a fee and the fee, an annual fee to the dam safety program. And the fee is related to the risk of the dam. Um, a lot of the dams, because the dam safety staff is very small, and they haven't had a lot of authority um, or regulations. Um, a lot of the dams in Vermont, there are many, many, many dams in Vermont, and a lot of them have not been inspected for a very long time. So the East Callis one had not been inspected for a very long time, and when they um, inspected it last summer and updated the measurements and so forth, they determined that it's a significant hazard dam um, because if it were to fail unexpectedly, as it did last summer but only partially, um, then it would cause significant damage, um, destruction of um, infrastructure and homes and so forth. So. Um, so that's one thing that changed last summer was the hazard rating on the dam. Um, so we hired SLR Consulting, which is an engineering firm based in Waterbury who um, has more experience than probably everybody else combined in Vermont in um, designing dam removal projects um, to do a feasibility study to look at you know, some of the factors that we're going to need to consider in looking at removing the dam. Um, at the same time, we applied for funding from the Lake Champlain Basin Program, and we just um, finally received our agreement so we can begin work on the, on the engineer design for the removal. Um, the, the way these projects are funded is kind of funky, and it's all about what the ultimate benefit of removal will be. So if it's, um, you know, aquatic organism passage, then we could get fish and wildlife funding. If it's um, water quality, we might be able to get um, some amount of state clean water funds. 
and if it's flood risk reduction, we might be able to get FEMA funds. Um, so we will be putting in a pre-application to the hazard mitigation grant fund um, this summer to see if we can at least get on the list for that because I think that flood risk reduction is definitely one of the biggest benefits of removal in the case of this dam. But since I know that the, the mill pond obviously is a, you know, aesthetic value and kind of a focal point for the East Calais village, we want to make sure that we, you know, talk to the community and check in with you all and make sure that you have your questions answered and um, have all the information that we can share with you as, as the process goes along. So that's what we're here today just to let you know what we're up to and find out what questions you might have or what you might want us to know as we go forward. So the, the, it sounds like the first step is sort of looking at for funding sources. Well, we have funding for design. For design. So we're good, okay. good to go on design and that'll keep us busy for a year okay. <laughs> probably. Uh, but but because the um, the cost of removal is significant in this case you know maybe six hundred thousand um, dollars so we have to start thinking now about where that funding might come from. <coughs> so, um, uh, Jeff, you um, I just, I do, so in terms of the time frame, you're looking at dam removal potentially two years out, or? I would love to do it in 2025. Okay. That would be fantastic. Um, but because our um, agreement for the design funding has been so late mm -hmm. to get here, we're getting a fairly late start this season, so it's more likely 2026. Okay. Um, have, have any of the design analysis, had, had, do you have a sense of what will happen to the mill pond? Yes, the mill pond, well, so initially what will happen is, I, I think, um, what we typically see in dam removal projects where there's a big ponded impoundment like that. Um, first, the water's drained and, you know, they make a, they lower the dam a little bit, you know, kind of on one side and let the water drain out. And um, then a lot of, so what's behind the dam now is not water. If you've been on that pond, it is not deep. What's behind the dam is um, impounded sediment, like, you know, 100 years of built up sediment. And so quite a lot of that sediment will be dug out and trucked off. Um, and what we'll try to do as we're um, as we're doing that, as we're excavating away the sediment, is um, create a pilot channel. So essentially connecting the stream as it exists downstream of the bridge with the stream up by the wreck fields and create a stream channel through there that is the pilot channel. So we're sort of encouraging the stream to take a certain course across the landscape. And then we will um, revegetate the floodplain area on either side. So there are tons of questions <laughs> that are still to be answered in terms of um, exactly where that where that pilot channel should go. Where will it be stable? Where will the stream be happy? Where might it have gone once upon a time if we hadn't interfered with it? Um, and a lot of that depends on topography, slope, soil, et cetera. But another a little question is, on the parcel maps, um, the pond is shown as a parcel with no ownership information. Mm -hmm. 
And it, it probably varies from deed to deed, whether properties, you know, whether the line is to the pond or whether it's like to the middle of the pond mm -hmm. or whether it's to the property on the other side of the pond. So there's going to have to be some deed research to figure out where people, where the different parcel boundaries are and who owns what and who wants to own what. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So that could get tricky, and that's a place where the town may need to have a role in thinking about. And maybe you even know or could find out the the parcel that is the pond. At least in our the records that we have, it doesn't have ownership assigned to it. But maybe the town owns it, or maybe the owners of the dam own it. We, we don't know. So. <laughs> so that has to get figured out. And then it does seem like, you know, in the, the Kingsbury from here to Woodbury is very full of beavers, right? <laughs> That's an understatement. <laughs> so it seems fairly likely that after we set up this pilot channel and restore the floodplain vegetation, it seems quite likely that beavers will then come in and rearrange and make some pots. things to their <laughs> liking. <laughs> yeah. So, and they're also at the, so in the area between sort of the top of the pond and the rec field, there's a big wetland. Mm -hmm. And so, there may be some amount of wetland restoration in there. I'm not sure what that might look like. We haven't done, we've, the last dam removal project we did, there was wetland because the impoundment had kind of made a wetland and we didn't really know what was gonna happen when we took away the impounded sediment, but it has become a wetland in, at least in one area. So. I have a couple of questions. Yeah. One is, um, how will, how and when will the consideration of the downstream effects on roads be considered? During this final design process, already we know that that um, bridge is really too small. Okay. Um, whether the dam, whether the dam is removed or not, that bridge is too small. So. And we had heard that maybe there had been a plan to replace that bridge. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's being designed as we speak. It so. is? Yeah. Okay. Oh, great. Well, then that could all just work out. Who's working? Well, not, not to replace it, but to buttress it, to strengthen it. So it's I think we should talk sooner than later. DeWolf Engineering. DeWolf is working on that. Kari's our road commissioner, so he would okay. be your contact there. Okay. Yeah, I would replace. So yeah, it let's with let's a follow up on that. <laughs> um, my other question is: um, Have you done any outreach to to the local villagers, or do you want our help with, with doing outreach? So last summer, um, the land, the owners of the mill building and dam held a public meeting for folks to come and answer questions. I unfortunately had COVID and so attended the meeting by Zoom, which was dysfunctional, but <laughs> I was there, I can agree. I couldn't hear a lot of what you said. <laughs> and um, and uh, Ben Green from Dam Safety was able to attend in person and he, he was terrific. So, um, But if there is, um, if you think that would be a good idea, we could do that again. You know, maybe when we get to the point of like 30% design, the preliminary design. Sure. Yeah. Uh, I will say we have a potluck there the fourth Thursday of every month. And okay. we had another village situation where folks came in and talked about it with the gathering that was already there. So if you would like to come to one of those, uh, you can get in touch with in the town office and I'll help you out with it. Great. What is their name for that? It's the East Callis Potluck. Okay. <laughs> this is in our town clerk. Right. <laughs> so she can help you with that land research. Oh, great. Yeah, I'll, I'll All right, the you town masters and me working with you on the deeds. The town phone, phone number is 
800-888-8720 and ask to speak to Tegan. All right. And the public is in that the post office building right there. So okay. you, you can you are right there. Jordan, did you have a question? Uh, yeah, uh, I've got a couple. I think two of them have been answered. The first one was about how the change in topography would affect uh, kind of land land ownership and and plot uh, stuff. But I guess TBD <laughs> sounds like that's on everybody's radar. Uh, my second question was mostly coordination. What what role does the town play? It, it sounds like we have but kind of a minimal official role, but we're more of a conduit of information and maybe coordinating community outreach so that folks feel like they can participate in providing input. Is that fair? That's fair. Um, there isn't there. So the, the dam is privately owned and the, right. the decision to remove it is with the landowners. Um, and so there, isn't a formal process that enables a role for the community or for community input or anything, but we just want to do that. So, especially, you know, if it were, so for instance, in um, the last dam removal we did in Northfield, there, it, the dam was on private property, but it was like in the woods <coughs> where no one was gonna notice that it was gone. So there was, we did talk to the select board about it just so that the you know town leadership was informed and engaged, but um, that was sort of the end of that. Um, Jordan, as you know, you're, uh, there's a dam um, removal, three dam removals we're working on in Barrie, and um, the, we have talked to the city council in Barrie about those as well to make sure that they, um, they stay informed. And so that when, you know, if people come to you with questions, you either have the information or know that, that you can reach out to us and, and we'll answer questions. But there isn't really a, uh, you know, it's not like there's an Act 250 right. process or something like that. Okay. It's just informal. And we, one other thing I should mention is that the uh, property is on the National Register mm -hmm. of Historic Places. And so we are, um, we have looped in the Callis um, Historic Preservation Committee, and we've included funding in our design grant to um, start working with that committee and a sign design person on an interpretive sign or set of signs to um, to make sure that we're um, finding a good way to commemorate the historic nature of it. One more, what, sorry. I have one more question, might be sacrilege, but um, Michelle, is given the expense of this one and kind of the complexity with the property lines and kind of the upstream and kind of downstream in, impacts of, of removal and restoration, would, would reinforcing the dam be a design consideration um, at, at any point or, or well, is, is removal just the, the primary focus? The landowners actually went down the repair path first before <clears throat> removal, considering removal. And the, um, the one part of the repair equation is that uh, because the dam is classified as a significant hazard, in order to um, rebuild it for in order to repair it which essentially would consist of rebuilding it <laughs> um, it has to be designed to um, pass the 1000 year flood with like a foot of freeboard or something 
So the design, it's quite a design challenge to ensure that the dam can safely handle a thousand year flood. And so you have to have an engineered design and the, it would have to be rebuilt. And so... And even then they would own the long-term liability because they would still own, own the dam. So um, yes. even if they were able to. So I understood, yeah, thank you. I'm just kind of curious about that. Yeah, and then they did get, they did have an engineer out to look at it and give them an, a cost estimate for repair. And he said it would be um, over a million dollars to repair. So, no doubt. Yeah. What's we're, that? We're deep now? in that. Yeah. 1.2. Yeah. 1.2. Yeah. If I remember correctly, he did offer to sell it to anyone for a dollar who wanted it. <laughs> yeah. And then and he also offered like if East Callus wanted to create a group and work to save it and no one stepped forward. So no. Great. So the so critters will be happy. That's right. We're a little over time. Any other quick questions? When was it though, the Darren? So I don't know the answer to the year it was originally built, and it's a little tricky because um, people tend to refer to dams as having been built, you know, in 1750 <laughs> or 1820 or whatever. But then the reality is that they've probably been rebuilt, mm -hmm. you know, five or six times over history, mm -hmm. and this one was rebuilt fairly recently. I feel like in, in the, the 70s, 70s was the last time. But it was rebuilt. Really <clears throat> so it's old, old, older. There yeah. has been a dam in that location for yeah. a very long time. Yeah. And, and a mill. And a mill, yeah. yeah. The yeah. mill building is, yeah. is it the original building. Yeah. yeah. Great. I wonder if there's this, this is talking a little off the cuff, but. Um, I wonder if there's a way, depending on how the, the deed and title um, discovery goes, whether or not um, uh, preserving the, uh, the, the border of the uh, pond as it is now um, as, as a property boundary, um, and then take, take, having the town take ownership of the wetland that is created. Mm -hmm. Um, provides some uh, some efficiency and simplicity um, to the adjoining property owners. Uh, it's and always going to be subject to and and long term protection of of wetland uh, area. But um, yeah, I mean it Perfect. opens the door for everybody to kind of treat it and and have to agree to that individually and separately, but um, that would be an interesting way, an interesting line of dialogue, I think. Uh, Personally, I think that would be terrific. And I also think it would be really cool um, if it could, if part of the project included finding a way to connect the um, trail that goes downstream of the bridge to the red area up there it would be really great to have a public trail that connected all of that and gave people access to that area for recreation yeah because it stinks walking to the baseball field from yeah the village. Mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. have a trails committee member <laughs> <laughs> and hopeful that we'll stay in touch and informed and involved yeah. yep. throughout the process. If you have any questions, let us know. Thank you for your work okay. on this. Yeah. Okay. Great. Um, the amendment of the dog protective order is next. Yep. Buffy's here. Buffy's here. Do you want to jump in? We had approved the... Sure, do we get a background here for, for yeah. Bill and Christy? So, um, a little over a year ago, there was a dog attack that a formal hearing was held, and the select board issued a protective order for this dog that lives across the street. Um, and then in April, I believe it was, the dog was seen running loose and in violation of the protective order. 
Um, so uh, the upshot is that working with, with Buffy, who's on the call, our new animal control officer, her very first assignment, um, <laughs> working on a, um, what we ended up proposing was to amend the protective order to improve it really to get a, a safer outcome. Um, you know, and, um, and uh, our attorney, Joe McLean, um, recommended that we structure it as an agreement um, so that, it, so not, so as not to have to go back through the hearing process and, and, and issue that as a like part of but basically come to an agreement with, with the owner. And so um, you probably saw in the folder was the proposed agreement. Uh, Buffy brought that to Elsa, the dog owner, and we got a response from her, and so we're discussing how do we want to respond to the response. Um, I, I would say that it sounds like most of the things that the select board asked for are in process. There's a bit of a question about um, the wireless fencing system. Buffy, you want to add anything? Um, <clears throat> basically, I think she's she's trying to work with us and definitely trying to keep them home. Um, working with a trainer, uh, the GPS system. She's worried, you know, wants to go to somebody that has used these and been successful on this breed of dog um, to keep them in to have the fencing. Uh, work against their long hair and their skin. Uh, basically, she, she's honestly, I think she's definitely trying. Um, she's trying to make sure that the dog is our home. And I think, you know, um, I'm not sure how many of you guys have dogs, but to, I think that the one time the dog got loose, you know, she definitely took action and went after it. Just to clarify, the one time, meaning in April, when Correct. the most recent the most one. Recent okay. And, and it's the one time that we know of. Hmm. I mean, the dog could have gotten loose other times and we were never aware of it. True, okay. uh, but I think we would have, somebody would have let us know, especially with you guys being that close, that if they had been loose, that somebody would have said something. So I guess... We, so it seems like she met or is working yeah, towards Yeah, she's the definitely equipment. on board with the training, um, the leash, um, what were the other aspects? Um, yeah. Most she of said, it. So I think the question, I think the main question to consider is how strongly do you feel about the wireless fencing system, GPS or not? And um, do we remove that or alter it or leave it in as is? And go back so, and get this. so I guess I got a couple couple of comments and, and part of it invo involves that one you know one um, is that um, it, I guess it's really not in the town's interest to uh, to go back and modify or rehear hear the case I mean really what we're trying to do with with this agreement is uh is just kind of re reach an agreement that puts the town and the dog owner in a better position to have uh a dialogue around keeping the dogs under controls and and like working through you know an escalation of efforts um relative to you know repeat occurrences uh if if at all so you know, I think it, it's in our interest to like try to get whatever we put in in the agreement um, mutually agreed upon between the two parties, and with the understanding that we are just trying to give everybody as many reasonable options to um, to work towards getting getting the dogs or keeping the dogs um, uh, on the property and under control. And and Buffy, I appreciate the um, kind of the rapport that you've. Uh, work to develop um, with with Elsa on this one. Um, I'd say, you know, it's most important, I guess, for us to have an agreement that is signed. Um, then, and and to work through seeing, like, okay, great, the training is 
uh, she's going to seek training. That wasn't in the original agreement, so uh, or the original uh, not protective order. So let's see how the the training uh, the training works, um, and then work on more solid pieces of infrastructure as as we move through it. I'd say rather than calling it a GPS or wireless, uh, let's refer to it as just uh, an electronic fence because there are so many different options out there and. Uh, and not all of them work for all breeds and topographies and et cetera, et cetera. You know, I would think relative to her particular parcel and the fact that there's existing fence infrastructure, you know, running running a a physical wire around the whole, you know, a very small gauge physical wire around the whole property is going to be less costly um, and more effective than than doing a GPS collar. So I let let's not box ourselves into any one particular solution um, and and just try to capture that with some electronic fencing uh, verbiage. Does that sound pretty accurate, Buffy? That definitely sounds fair because I think you yeah. are right. If you if you go for the GPS versus the wireless versus the non-wireless, there's so many choices out there and so many things that might and might not work that if you put yourself into a position that you have to have this one and then come to find out it's never going to work. I think you're right on that. I did oh. have a question. I Well, Elsa kind of had a question, but so the order, um, and I asked Barbara to send it to me so I could send it off to Elsa um why we were talking about it um so what kind of wondering about a timeline versus you know is it a new occurrence of the dog not following the order or is it the town's ordinance type of thing you know are are you putting a timeline on it or is this for the end of the dog's life you know, she'd really like to prove that the dog isn't aggressive. I know that, you know, the dog has proved it, but at the same token, you know, she's definitely reaching out and working with a trainer that kind of works more with that type of dog. So I don't have the language in front of me, but from what I recall, and hopefully folks can back me up on this a little bit, but, um, the unique circumstances, I guess, is that there were two dogs involved in the original one, um, and one, you know, was found to be kind of the primary aggressor um, and is now deceased. The other dog that uh, Trixie um, was found was reported to have um, uh, been a resident, but was only found to be potentially vicious um and was not so you know i don't think we can change that that's that's like in in the record and part of i guess trixie's history but um there is a little bit different clarification there i i don't know that there's any time frame that we could just say this this no longer uh is in in consideration because there was already a, a finding that she was involved in uh, in an incident that that qualifies her as potentially vicious. Um, um, you know, for I guess from my perspective and uh, position, I, I think it's more important that there's an agreement like the one we're working towards that says we're going to be working on on different resolutions. Um, than it is to define a particular timeline. Uh, the more time that we spend not having an agreement that kind of captures or represents that intent between both parties, the less comfortable I think I certainly get and, and likely the town would be. That, that makes sense. Thank you. So my understanding that the reason Buffy was asking the question was that Elsa was asking, can we discontinue the dog protective order after receiving a letter documenting that Trixie has completed training? And um, 
it seems like what we need to do is say, to change the agreement between the two parties, because we're negotiating an agreement that says we're open to that, but we want to, you know, we're going to continue evaluating as and and discussing and taking appropriate action in the future, but not making a commitment to ending the protective order until we see how things are going. So, um, I, I, to re in response to that, agree that the dog might complete training, but she hasn't proven herself to not be vicious. So right. Only time will tell, right? Right. Um, I have a question that maybe is specifically for Buffy and Jamie, because you've inspected the site, you've seen the fencing and the gate. So one of the things that she had to do last year, which she did do, was to put on a self-locking gate. My understanding was that this past April event was human error. Somebody didn't close the gate. So it seems to me that that needs to be addressed. And, and I guess I suspected that a self-closing gate had some kind of a spring on it, that it couldn't stand open. It, a spring would pull it closed, and then the lock goes click and locks. So and what was happening with the gate um, in talking to Elsa? Is that because of the thaw and the freeze um, from the winter, the wooden gate? had adjusted a little bit so that's why we came up with putting on a backup to it so that it swings over it so even if that shifts a little bit it will still hold it in position okay because because that that that's what i haven't seen in our amendment to her or any of this discussion is that is fixing what seemed to be the problem in april which was that the gate didn't close and that what that seems like that needs to be addressed and repaired. That's right. Yeah, she actually put that in her letter. That um, because when I had went up and talked with her, um, after me and Jamie had gone up, is that you know she was explaining what had happened and basically, um, I told her that there is a latch that can go over it that would help as a backup, so that even if it shifted a little bit, it would still be secured enough to close so that the dog couldn't get in and out. It is there a spring that doesn't allow the gate to stand open, it pulls it shut? Correct. Does that work well? It seemed to definitely, and definitely if it, um, with the adjustment of springtime, of course it was after that when I went up and looked at it the second time, um, and she actually sent me some photos of it to see um, is basically that that's what had happened is it had shifted. And now the backup that she had put on that she did put in her letter that um, she went out and got that one seems to be much easier um, at having a more of a secured. Have you inspected it? I have not gone up in the last couple weeks. Does the gate open in or does the gate open out? In. Okay. Well, and to be clear, Elsa's letter says she has installed a backup gate latch. And additionally, she, she says she's installing an additional type of backup gate latch recommended by the animal control officer. So she's on the latch issue, it seems like. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. I, I'm, Go ahead, Jordan. Then... I, I think, you know, there's there's two things going on. One is obviously sure there's a there is a, a protective order that that said that you were going to per, or that the uh, dog owner was going to pursue, uh, you know, a latch solution that would take the human error out of um, the dogs potentially getting out. Um, the other. The other challenge and and reasoning for this agreement is that the original protective order uh, basically described that and a couple of other things, but didn't imagine very creatively like other escalating uh, remedies uh, if if 
that were to happen aside from just making the fence bigger, um, which wouldn't necessarily solve uh, the human error of a, a latch being left open, um, et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, you know, I think the, the dog owner's willingness to continue to install automated latching things and redundancies in the latch system uh, around the fences and the openings are are great and always good to keep the owner engaged on those particular things. But we do need some sort of an agreement that helps us, you know, pursue other more sustainable uh, and comprehensive remedies. Um, should should there be continued issues with uh, with the latches, so that we're not constantly talking about you know latches and uh more sophisticated fencing uh which from my perspective and having maintained various iterations of fences can be uh can be can be tough at best in vermont um and are always subject to the the human error element to a certain extent um so that you know i that's why I think that it's great to have the training captured in there and her uh, efforts to uh, pursue training. Um, and then as a something else to uh, potentially uh, pursue uh, would be uh, would be the electric uh, fence option. But at this point, I guess I'm I, I, I'm I don't think that we're saying that she needs to pursue that. Um, she's, she's fixed the fence and, uh, is pursuing training. So it'd be mm -hmm. a matter of acknowledging that. Is that right? I mean, I, I think our original proposed agreement asked that to be installed by August 1st. Right. And she's saying she's not sure about the breed. Right. She's saying only if the trainer agrees that that's the way to go. And I guess it's up to us if we're sort of backing off that requirement um, or altering that requirement. Right, that's what I understand. So in response to her saying, I've researched systems, I'm gonna further discuss it, I'm gonna trial them, I'm gonna get the advice of my dog trainer, all that's pretty reasonable. And so the question is, do we change the agreement or to, to acknowledge that, you know, you could just say a, 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 an electronic containment system or Elsa will, the, whoever will, will, will continue to, to analyze the suitability of an electronic containment system and it, it could be in consultation with uh, the town. Will, um, install what's appropriate or something like that. I I yeah uh, I don't I don't have any particular objection to that type of uh, that type of modification. I'm okay with that. You... Yeah, I mean, so what I'm getting from this is. Um... Elsa will consider an electronic containment system in consultation with the animal control officer. Um, a locking, self-locking gate mechanism has been installed and a backup latch will be installed. And we are, you are open to lifting the protective order in the future, but only after sufficient time has passed to that's demonstrated improvement. Keep, maybe keep it vague like that yeah. and, and let her come back to us. I wonder if we want to ask that every spring after the spring thaw, she just tests the efficacy of the latching gate. You recommend it. Yeah. Or, or the she, she maintenance. Right. She could make, could, does the animal control officer have the, the ability to, to inspect at any time or could the agreement um, specify that there'll be you know, a regular inspection or, or something like that? Right, or just that, that she's required to um, maintain the gate infrastructure in working order at all times. 
Yeah, I, I guess I'd, I'd, my preference would be uh, language like that as opposed to, you know, mandating that the animal control officer is actively inspecting. I'm just not that we have a scalability issue, but like that, that seems to be uh, a lot to ask, I think, uh, for for the animal control officer. You know, it's the owner's responsibility to maintain the infrastructure um, you know, in perpetuity. So I think Jamie's language makes kind of speaks to that. So, okay. yeah. so I, I can update this proposed amendment and the question is, do you want to see it again or do you want to authorize Jordan to sign it and, and um, Buffy to bring it to us? I think I'm comfortable authorizing right, Jordan yeah, to that's sign fine. it and okay. move forward. Okay. So, that's what so, so the other thing I guess that I would uh, to back to uh, uh, Elsa's request to consider removing the protective order. Uh, I, I like um, Chris's language there. I would just add that it would have to. The only way that I feel like that that would be a, appropriate would be if it was a, a request from the owner after you know period of time to be determined with the select board um, uh, to to host a hearing. I mean, I think the community would, it would be appropriate for that to be a hearing in which the community could um, could participate in having a voice in that in that decision. Does that I agree? Does that does that sound appropriate to everybody else? Yeah, that's good, Jordan. <clears throat> to the aspect of the timeline, uh, would it, uh, make more sense to say something to the extent of the protective order will remain in place until uh, the owner and the dog have proven that it is no longer needed with some type of caveat uh, regarding if the dog does regress at all um, possibly i i know we're we're picking a straw now it's, it's hard so to put well that Right. Now, as a, you know, sufficient time has passed to demonstrate improvement or yeah. adequate sufficiency. Yeah. And like yeah, and then following a public hearing. Right. I okay. think that's a, a good call for you. Yeah. Um. So, do we have a motion? <laughs> Out of all that. <laughs> that would be good. Uh, I would move. I. I. Okay. <laughs> do you want it? I, I just I I feel like we've we've talked about a lot of revisions uh and and language and uh I just want to be kind of uh respectful of community members' ability to see that before we make a motion to adopt language and authorize signature. So uh, would it would it be appropriate to? kind of just circulate those revisions and, and kind of table any kind of authorization um, un until the next meeting. Sure. Just yeah. two more weeks. That's fine. Get it right. Yep. Okay. Uh, 15 minutes late. Oh, that's okay. That's not bad. Yeah, no. I ran ahead of schedule for my last meeting, so I... <laughs> Um, moving to town plan updates. Wait, do, do we need to do something with I think that? We decided to. Okay, we don't need a motion to do we that. We don't need All a right. motion. We'll wait. We'll bring a draft, we'll bring back, a draft back. back. Thank you. Yeah. Approve it next time. Two yep. Yes. Yep. Thank you all. That's good progress. Okay. Right. Town plan. Town plan. Town plan. So uh, I sent along two different drafts um, one for the Managing Municipal Services section and for transportation. Um, I think it's probably best to, to look at Municipal Services first. Um, it is probably the most straightforward um, section that we have. Um, I did ask Kari and Tegan and Barbara to put some input. There was a lot of things that had changed since the last town plan um, and so we really tried to hone it in, and I think it's actually in a pretty good place. Um, the biggest um, suggestion that was given was about creating a, a chart yeah. with different <laughs> positions and what like their role, like to try and make it a little easier and cleaner to read 
Um, and I think that's the, the place where the, the most work will probably still need to be done, is just to make sure that that's, that's correct. Um, but the, your guys' suggestions were great. Um, we talked about it at the last Planning Commission meeting. Um, the only thing that we, we, one suggestion that we took, but then took a totally different direction, was the Declaration of Inclusion. And I had put that in the section, and then it felt like it was actually two different things. And one was about the accessibility of government to people, and we felt that that was a town service, like making sure government was accessible in all different ways. Um, and that we would pull, that we felt that the Declaration of Inclusion itself was important enough to put at the beginning behind the vision statement. Just literally put the declaration of inclusion at the beginning of the document. And so that's what we, the plan is. And so um, I don't know if the section I gave you took out that inclusion part yet, but that was the plan. The plan was to put a, a section about accessibility to government and then put declaration of inclusion standalone because that it was important enough on its own. So then the two things were both both put in to the town plan. So I don't know if you guys have any suggestions about municipal services or not. Quick question, when you said at the beginning, at the very beginning yes, of the, the town, entire document. not the beginning of this Correct. section. Gotcha. Correct. So it would be like, you opened up, yep. there's the vision yep. statement and then the declaration Got of it. inclusion. Thank you. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. So I don't know if you have any thoughts or comments about municipal services. I think there's still some things to tweak. Once I get those things that we had from Planning Commission, I was going to send it back to you three just to see, make sure that it was all correct. But I didn't know if there were any um, questions or input you had from Select Board about that one as well. I have another comment. Um, I know when we built the, um, the town office, mm -hmm. um, we had a policy, use of the town office policy. And so small boards and meetings up to 16 people could meet there. And I saw that you want to delete that line that there's a small area where town committees meetings can be held and you wrote to leave this sentence. So is it that no town committees or do we still have that policy or do we delete that policy? Or so we haven't updated the policy yet, but that policy was designed around not having a functioning town hall. Um, and so because the records are all there, there's so much technology in there, there's just a lot in there, we don't want as much traffic in and out, we have this space, it's designed for meetings. So we're hoping people can meet here as often as possible. There are occasions when people double book, when a meeting really needs to happen at the same time something's happening in here that we will accommodate, but for the most part, we're really trying to make that less of a big committee meeting space. Right. So we just need to change the language in here. Well, we're and not looking to encourage committee meetings there. Right. So, so I, would I would rather see it gone. People contact us. We can make an exception if they ask us, but we don't want to promote it. But no, so it, the language just needs to be fixed in here. Yes, that, to take that part out. Yeah. I would say business meetings, not committee meetings. Yep, however you want to fix it. Yeah. I'm just saying we have a policy that says mm -hmm. it's the use of the town office. It's not policy. a list of So we need to look at that yes. and yeah. change some things up. So yeah. that's all. Yeah. And so, you're looking at it again, it struck me that um, this is sort of a framing issue, but maybe a, a, a way to think about this chapter is what are the core services that mm -hmm. Calus provides and, and sort of lead with that mm -hmm. uh, rather than facilities or personnel. And, it, and this okay. came to the forefront in the budgeting process last year. We were making some difficult decisions in that budget context. And so I'm thinking of things like roads and emergency services, fire and ambulance, but emergency planning and emergency response, uh, land records, zoning. I mean, there are a few things that we will always have to do. Mm -hmm. And it just seems like it should be framed that way. There's a lot of other things that we do do and we'll want to do. Maybe some things we want to add, but, there, but it seemed like highlighting those. Would so be maybe a start, the major things that you know the, the, the core services that are always going to be provided mm -hmm. regardless of what goes on everything else
can change, and obviously we had to change, right? Like yeah. we had to change these positions and this and that, yeah. and that's why. And, and the personnel and the facilities yeah. we have right. follow from those core services. But there are core services. I like that. So almost a, a, a narrative or even a list of the mm -hmm. things that the town core. I like that core services that will always be provided. Yeah. And just put that up front. Yeah. So I have a welcome to Callis brochure mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. I can show you that actually okay. lists them all together in one place. There we go. So there we, go. we can do That's that offline. Right. Uh, yep, yeah, we'll talk. Jared, what one of the other things that that stands out to me, and especially relative to Kari's comments, are the emergency services. You know, especially so like the recent heat wave. Like there are there are these. Mm -hmm. There are resources in town that can be made made available to people in need um, relative to certain kinds of events. So I almost think that like maybe like emergency services or resources can be noted here as like a as like an individual thing. Um, it'd be nice. I've been having kind of a conversation um, with the emergency uh, services committee to like think about how we might be able to put that information more prominently on like the website. So if people have questions, uh, if they don't have to wait to find it from or hear about it from uh, from the select board or uh, for a town, town staff, but they can go to a website and find it quickly. But maybe this could be another place that something like that could live. Um, it's a very ambiguous charge, but uh, but it's been something that's been top of mind more recently at, over the last year for me. I mean, it's, it's, it's not necessarily ambiguous. And if the idea of the town plan is what the town is going to aspire to be over the next almost decade, we want to continue to provide those things. And yeah. so making sure that it's even just listed there as things we do yeah. sets out that it's a priority that as a town, we provide these things. Yeah. It doesn't have to be specific, but it can be that we do that. And so we can, we can lay that out in, in more detail. Yeah. That's good, and I mean, since the town plan is governing the next decade, in the mm -hmm. next decade, emergency is services and yeah. resources are going to be critical. We can do that. Anything else with municipal services? Um, I'll have any? First, and I'll jump in. Curry. Oh, uh, curiosity for me has been. Um, the school um and whether or not there's been any communication on what is it premature to think about the school facility falling into this um post potential uh merger i mean it is so there is an education section that will detail all of that in and of itself, but I get your point that in the event of a future consolidation, that building does revert, right, correctly to the town? Yeah, or it's a town building yeah. now. It's a town building now, so I don't know, yeah, I mean. The, the timing could hardly be worse to put <laughs> that into the plan. Co correct, I mean, we, we already have, so many things buzzing around the education section yeah. and the timing of the town plan with that. Yeah. But then, yeah, I mean, you're, you're not wrong. We've also batted around the concern of putting things like that in the town plan and giving it the ability to feel like it's something that can happen, mm -hmm. right? But at the same time, there is a reality too. So I, it, it, it does, maybe it just needs to be mentioned in a way that it's sort of like a, you know, a reminder that the school is the town's. I, th I think the draft does say it's under consideration as yeah. we write this. It, it's like this is what this is, and the, the, the school, the building itself belongs to the town of Callis, and that, you know, in the future it can be used for, you know, we, can, we can do it in a way that it was yeah. kind of future thinking, but not specifically going, well, here's how we'll use it. Yeah. Because there is a fear that if we lay out too much of how you could use it, Tempting. It's too tempting to go, well, that's perfect. We can just close the school and do that. And so I think we can find a way to work that. But you're right. It does need to be listed then as a I mean, it is a, it is a town asset and it is there as a possible service. So we will make sure that that is added. One other thing that just 
we're on this, um, one piece of feedback that I've heard off and on over time about accessibility of municipal services is the idea of a Saturday morning hours or one weekday hours mm. of the town office for people who work regular schedules and can't get there during the day. And that may not be a popular idea, <laughs> but I just wanted to throw it back as feedback I've gotten over time. I know Donna Fitch, when she was town clerk, tried that. She did Saturday mornings for six months and not, not one single person showed up. <laughs> <laughs> so she quit it. <laughs> 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 yeah. A lot of Fair. people had asked for it and yeah. to the point that she said, okay. Interesting. And then the next Saturday, there were like three people. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the uh, I mean, when we, night evening. When we look at the, the action steps of things, if there are, if it's necessary, because a lot of things don't need it, but we could put in there, we, I mean, we've kind of gotten to the point where we're like, we want to explore a lot of things. So maybe right. putting in, exploring, mm -hmm. right. expanding our, you know, just mm -hmm. explore that. Like, again, it's, it's a, it's a future kind of thing. So it's sort of like we can look at this. Like right. let's let's not take it off the table, but not be real specific. Right. And like we want TV to be there on Saturday morning. Well, my question is: Is this for town business? Is this you know so I can register my dog and ask this question, or is this like Eva used to have coffee with people on Saturday mornings and just like have an open forum? Like, I, do I you feel, know which? I feel like the people I've talked to has been about town business. It's like oh, I'm not one person to do has this. asked me. Hey, would you like to be open on Saturday or Saturday? And all I've been there for years and no one has ever better. said anything to me. So, so they, they just want to chat. They just want to chat. Fair enough. Fair what enough. if I came to the store and I just drank a coffee and they talked to me there? That was like, yeah. that's what it's about. <laughs> Probably. But I mean, I think that's, and that's how we talk about that. I mean, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm going to use right now for our purposes exploring certain things, but I think we could word it in ways where sort of like, We'll look at doing X, yeah. right? Like we don't have to to, to to wet ourselves to something specific, but we can say, well, no. As we go for, it is. You know, people do. Well, I can register my dog online. You know what I mean? Like they want to be able to do things at different. Yeah. So we'll explore it. It doesn't mean we we say exactly right. Something. Just exploring ways to. But I we can put that in there for sure. I mean, I'm not. Yeah. Uh, I. Thanks for doing all this. I, um, I'm, coming, I'm coming a little late to the game, but uh, I was looking at the proposed zoning district changes. Mm -hmm. Are you still taking input on that? Or? We, we're still taking, for, when it comes to town plan, we're still taking yeah. input on it. What's the best venue for, for that kind of discussion? I can give you, you can come to planning commission meetings or I can give you some information. Okay. We have a way for people to put input online that we can gather. Yeah. So I can give you that information. And it's okay. on the whole page of the website, how to get in touch with yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned a chart. Did yes. You, did you want the town org chart? Yes. Well, I've already got it. Yeah. So we're gonna yeah, add. That's why you asked. We're gonna add the org chart in there. Okay. I think that that helps too. Like, it's just a visual, and it's there. So. Yeah. Well, and I guess I would include also either the website almost as as a service. Um, we yeah. have. Yeah. Yeah, we, we've taken your suggestion, Jordan, in trying to start to hyperlink things. Because, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, as it lives as an electronic document, there's no reason not to link things. Um, paper documents a little harder. And as you are giving a good hard look at the website, feel free to give us feedback on things you would like changed. I'm too deep in it now and I know where everything is. Right. So there's, you know, people come and say, this is hard to find. And then I figure, oh, well, yes, it is hard to find. But I, Kind of a little, yeah. You know. yeah, actually, that, that was from our last planning commission meeting. That was one of the things to put in there was that there was a lot of work put into the website yeah. since the last town plan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But now making sure that people know that that is it's there. Mm -hmm. Middlesex called us today to compliment our website. Yeah. Aww. Aww. Nice. 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 <laughs> and what, what is the timeline for the town plan? Uh, so we, we, it needs to be done by the end of this year. So the, the goal is, is that we get it to select board November okay. for their final look through and approval. But we, there is no deadline except it has to be done in 24. Okay. Yeah, so I've got several things. Yeah. Um, but I'll only talk about the ones that change content. 
Okay. Um, so in the very first paragraph under town office, mm -hmm. there's a statement that says the town office is accessible for disabled citizens. It's mostly disabled, but it is not entirely. We actually had okay. an inspection done by BCIL, Vermont Center for Independent Living, okay. this past December, and learned that the <clears throat> bathroom is actually not wheelchair accessible. Mm. So we need to figure out how to reword that so that it sounds positive, <laughs> but it's not, but it and just I got what you're saying. Yeah, okay. Um, the other one that actually changes content is under your new chart of staff. Yes. The treasurer is not elected. The treasurer okay. is appointed, and the town clerk and the treasurer is not the same person. They're not. Okay. And hasn't been for a long, long time. Okay. Probably about eight years. Yeah. <laughs> Where was it that it looked like it was? No, 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 I'm saying, because I changed that, but there was somewhere where, I don't know. Well, if yeah. you find it again, then it's fine. Yeah, I, I will, maybe it was somewhere. And I, but okay, so treasurer is a separate. Yeah, they, those need to be separated, and the okay. treasurer is appointed by the select board. Appointed. Okay. The assistant town clerk is appointed, not hired. Gotcha. Yes. Um, tell me when you're ready. No, you're good. Under elected officials, you yeah. have auditors. We don't have elected auditors. Yeah, we hire auditors. That was what that was in the last one. Oh, we yeah, it. well, maybe it was true eight years ago. I don't mm -hmm. know, but it's not but true yes. now. So take yeah. out the auditors. Yeah, um, and then, then the last one I just want to mention is this declaration of inclusion, the yes. importance of inclusion. Yes. While that's lovely, that is not at all what the, the inclusion work group. No, is that's why we've said that's why there's going to be separate. Okay. Okay. That, that, is but that description to is not is not. Yeah. That is, we don't want that description. That's yeah, that was pulled from the website under Declaration of Inclusion. No. I don't know. No, we don't know where you got that. I did. I, I, customer, a, 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 a positive customer, customer experience? Yeah. Trust me. It's, it, it's, I it's, look, I it's there. Because I, I just copied and pasted it. Oh, okay. That, <laughs> that is weird to me. I mean, so yeah, I, and that's why when we read through it, because to be honest with you, I just took it and pasted it. And then as we read through it, that's where we went. Those are two separate things. A declaration of inclusion and, and basically accessibility to the website are, are, yeah, are not Yeah, okay, okay, the good. So we'll get that so straight. So that's why we'll get that straight out. Yeah. yeah. So, so then what I'd like to do is just review it with you. Just yeah, no, I will, like outside, I said, offline. once okay. I do some of these things, I will then send it back to the okay. three of you. Okay, so perfect. Okay, good. Thank yeah. you so much. You guys welcome. are doing an awesome job. Uh, the transportation one yes. is huge. Yes. <laughs> and Gary even wanted me to make sure that you knew that he wasn't anywhere near. It's just because there's so much, and he's trying to get so much information. And one thing I'll tell you about that one that we've, I don't want to say struggled with because I don't think that's fair, but it's transportation being roads, and then there's transportation like parking rides and access to buses, and like there's two worlds of transportation Cycling. there, right? Cycling, like there's the roads, the physical part of transportation, right? And then the, the vehicles themselves. How do people get to places and those kind of things. And so he's still working on lots of those. Um, I would basically say any, any suggestions you have is what he really will be looking for as he goes forward, is suggestions for the transportation section. There are lots of really good things out there and then as we start talking about that in meetings, you go, well, where would that happen? Right? Like a park and ride. Or a bus, like the bus coming through, a Green Mountain Transit coming through. Like, lots of these things, and you go, well, where are we going to do that? <laughs> yeah. You know, you, you, unfortunately, you get into the exploring things again. Right? Like exploring a park, well, that makes it sound like we're going to explore, but nothing's ever going to happen with it. Right? And so, I think he's looking for suggestions for things in the transportation section. It's a big, it's a big section, lots of details to it. And like I said, two different worlds kind of going on. Did you say Gary's working on that? Gary, yeah. Was it there? It was there. Yeah. I'm trying to remember how it worked out in there. So, so my feedback on this section, and I've already yeah. given Gary quite a bit. But yeah. uh, I thought that the, in general, the plan, the goal of this plan was to get away from long lists of action steps 
Yes. And it seems like this chapter in particular retains that structure and yes. it's just caution about proposing a, a bunch of actions for some other group to do, such as <laughs> the select yeah. board is, is identified in at least half of these. <laughs> and, you, you know, whether this group agrees to it or not is one thing, but will the group four or five years from well, now? Well, and I think, Gary, I think Gary's transportation draft is one of the first that we did yeah. And we had since then had the conversation about like paring down these action steps and things. So I do think, I mean, I'm, I'll make sure we do that, but you're right. Like we need to go in and make sure that, I mean, cause some of that is also just things we can't, what if, we can't do much, you know what I mean? Like there's only, the roads would be maintained and how we maintain them and yeah. we yeah, can't force a park and ride to happen or we can't force, you know, we can say we want a bus to come through, right? But Figure out where are they going to stop? How are they going to get, you know? So we will look at that list of action steps. Because I, I do think that we found a format that we like, which is just kind of bullet points mm -hmm. yeah. of things after in a section, just kind of saying, hey, like these three things are really what we need to focus on and just kind of move on forward with it. And transportation yeah. is probably the same, but no different. And the way I thought it might work is, is to be pretty general with these kinds of goals. Like they're more like goal areas. Yeah. That the select board or the highway department, or, you know, when, right. as they're doing their annual planning, is always returning back to these general areas and saying, okay, what can we imagine doing in this next year right. to two years in right. this area? So it's part of our plan. Right. Like, not that it's not the transportation one, but if you go back to municipal services, that's kind of what we were doing with the, like, the town garage, right? Like, there's things like, let's then study a plan or let's make a plan for, like, does it need to be moved or not? And if it is, then what are you doing with it? If not, then what, like, but just like move forward with that. Yeah. Like, have, like it's on the radar, it's something we need to do, decide what to do with it. Like, I don't think it's necessarily there for the plan to describe, to like prescribe every little detail. Like that's not the point of it anyway. No, but if you go to a group like this and you say, town garage, huh? Like they're gonna know exactly, exactly. what the question you're asking. Exactly, exactly. The same, right? exactly. yes. Yeah. But transportation, you, we will we will definitely be bringing that one back. That's just a, I think it was good to get it in front of you, but I would I didn't necessarily expect a whole bunch of feedback yet either. Like it's just a big. Gary's got some of the more involved big. Like he's got agriculture too, and transportation <laughs> and natural resources. Yeah. So he's right. Like he's got. He's. He's Sounds like he didn't show up to the assignment meeting and everybody gave him the fun one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he brings everybody cookies every yeah, time, so we let it him go. We let him go. You know, we got to we get something. So, no, I think. Go ahead, Jordan. Sorry. Uh, so, uh, relative to transportation, I think um, from my read on on the original, uh, it's really focused a lot on like what they the residents of Calus uh, do and how they use the roads or need the roads, et cetera. Um, you know, this kind of ties back to the economic development uh, element, but, um, uh, but, you know, more and more people from outside of the community are coming to Calus for, uh, for various uh, reasons. And, and I think it would be worth uh, representing, um, considering, goals i guess that we might want or investigations or analysis that we might want to do to um uh to both encourage that but also make sure that people who are coming to our uh, community are you know participating in the usage of our roads in a way that the rest of the community likes um and and feels uh, is respectful you know i think um uh access to uh parking is a big issue um you know, yes. we've got a handful of communities uh, or, uh, you know, locations uh, that are great resources um, to drawing people in and great resources for community members to use. But um, but nobody really puts a lot of time into parking or parking alternatives. You know, what can we be having a more active dialogue with uh, joining property owners to make temporary parking arrangements um, when we have events that that keep kind of traffic control safe and um, and sustainable. Um, um, 
that's uh, the extent of my examples. I'll leave out, you know, people flying through various community centers and speed limits. But, um, you know, I think that that is also part of it. We've got people from outside of the community. We may have people who are coming and parking to ride their bikes on our roads uh, in our community. So, like, we're, what are we doing to help that and or, you know, promote that in a way that is... Um, Again, I guess I hate the word sustainable. Uh, it gets used for too many things, but you know, scale, scalable maybe, and not scalable. And that'll freak people out. But um, uh... <laughs> workable. But it's a, it's a fair question. Like when I was trying to run all the roads, I would have to park in different places so that I could run in the routes, and I didn't want to block all the parking at like the yeah. Adamant Co-op. But I also wasn't going to park in someone's front yard. It was a... yeah, yeah. And as you as you. As you start to look at how the sections of the town plan affect each other, mm. that transportation goes to economic development and to recreation. Well, what about all the bikers that come from outside? Yeah. Right? Well, can do we have the ability for them to park at the East Cal store or the Maple Corner store or the Adams store, right? Like, yeah. And to be able to get around because well then they're using the trick, you know, they're they're, they're putting right. money into the local, but how do you do that without it taking up, you know, those kind of things? So that's good and um, you, you, you raise a good point, Jordan, and that is how does transportation affect those who would come to visit, but then how do those visitors affect transportation as well? Like that's a really good that's a really good point that it's a wait, a two way street. <laughs> um, sorry. I have to listen. Come on. Jared. Jared, just lead into the whole transportation section with that. You just that's say true. transportation is a two way street and exactly. then just there you go. Yeah, but no, but I, but it also is it's a good point too, right? You don't you, you it, 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 both sides have something to to give and gain there, and we need to make sure we we follow that. So, that's good. so, so uh, on that, I I I have a suggestion in yeah. in thinking about the drafting of of this element in particular, but the whole plan is yeah. that. It's a, it's a long-term plan. We want it to guide us. So being real clear about what our goals and priorities are. So like, we want to be resident serving. We want to be visitor serving. And here's how, you know, here's like what, it, which is more important or, you know, and we want to be scenic and rural. We want to be safe. I mean, you know, having right. our goals and priorities mm -hmm. as a way to then guide what all these various well, potential the actions we, are. The way it's working out is that we're trying to, two things are working at once. We want to have a, a solid vision of the town plan and everything that then each section should fit that vision. But what we're doing is what we're finding is every time we go and rewrite a section, it kind of changes the way we look at the vision. So we're kind of doing two things at once, but in the end, you're absolutely correct. We need to have, this is the town's vision for the next decade. Then these sections are how we get to that. So to your point, yeah, yeah. we need to look in there. Okay, well then what's the purpose of this? And why are we doing that? And we need to make sure that we're, we're putting all that together. This may be in here some, mm -hmm. but I just want to name a conversation we've had several times about roads and uh, climate change, mm -hmm. right? And we were looking at, you know, our worst mud season of the year this year was probably the December one, although January may have been close behind. Mm -hmm. um, and just thinking about the fact that during the life of this document, we're likely going to have some really hard conversations about changing environment and what that means for maintaining roads mm -hmm. and we don't have those answers right now but right. just acknowledging that that's a, a probably upcoming conversation whether it's dramatic changes to how we build and maintain roads or you know more payment of segments or you know there's a lot of ways that could look right. but it feels well, I think thinking of the municipal services section, there was the whole part we wrote about that the, the strength of Callus is that there's a lot of people that are willing to, to get involved in it, but at the same time, just like every other town that's starting to become more of a problem, mm -hmm. right? 
And it's not like we have any real big answers to that, but that we're putting in it. Like we need to, that needs to be a focus. We, we need to focus on how we do, how we do that, well, we don't know right. right offhand, but we know we need, so it's sort of the same thing. We don't know how we can fix that, but we need to be ready as a town for the next decade to talk about the changing weather and how it's affecting our roads and what are we gonna do about it? And so I like that, that maybe there can be a more broad part that we put to that, that is very much like just acknowledge that and say that we need to be planning for that. And then even an action step could be that that's one of the things we wanna see a plan for how we tackle that without real prescriptive language, but something that's like we, we need to focus on. But that's a, that's a good point because that's, that's coming. It's coming. And, and as I had one person tell me too, that they said, I love electric vehicles, but they weigh more too. That's right. And you put yeah. them on dirt roads. Yeah. Yeah. And you're only going to, that's only going to, that's going to have a whole different reaction to it. And so, we, <laughs> let's do that. No, I like that. Yeah. On the chart under um, responsible poverty, mm -hmm. I don't think we have a highway operations manager anymore or a Callis Roads Advisory Committee. We will, we will make sure of that. Because I think we're getting rid of a lot of anything that says who the responsible party is. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because that's too specific. Um, you could just put Kari. <laughs> 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 for now on, yeah, we'll just get pictures of people and it'll just be Kari. You know what? Okay. Yeah, just say, <laughs> actually, transportation, Kari. <laughs> Turn the page, totally different set. Housing. Car. Car, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I won't, we won't do that to you, Car. Anything else? This is good. I appreciate all of it. No, it's, it's you. You're, Can you're, I just say one more thing off the topic of, of these two transportation mm -hmm. and town services? Mm -hmm. I just want to be sure that um, talking about housing. Mm -hmm. that the planning commission saw the vt digger article today about stows oh yeah we, we've already talked about it today <laughs> oh okay uh, because when i i said something to tika this morning that because we're getting up for a reappraisal next year it starts this year it starts, it starts this year, year. and tegan said it's going to happen here too tegan sees all this property sales that mm -hmm. happen and she said everything is selling for more than double it's assessed no, not more than double but close to double it's, it's a, a lot double. It's, it's, it's whatever it is it's significant it's, it is yeah. significant it's way so more than it's assessed i just i just want to be sure that whoever's working on housing is watching that appraisal reappraisal that's coming it is a seller's market not a buyer's oh market. yeah absolutely Except those sellers have to then buy something, so it's a uh, <laughs> disaster in both directions. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. But yeah, that Melanie's working on that one, but we'll we make sure because that is that's one of those future things that comes too. Like we know reappraisal, like yeah. it's gonna change. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thanks, Jared. You're, you're welcome. Yeah, thanks, Jared. Yeah. Excellent work. We haven't seen it yet, so <laughs> <laughs> more to come? Yeah, more to come. Let's okay. begin. Well, let's just lay there. there. <laughs> so uh clerks are all busy. There has been a lot of big legislation going through uh, that affect municipalities this year. Um, I tried to highlight the big ones that affect the select board as a whole, and then at the end I mentioned some that aren't as affecting. But the ones the first one I need to hear about is the um, open meeting law. Okay. And basically what that says is that it separates boards into two types, advisory and non-advisory. And um, let me get this right because it doesn't make sense. Non-advisory is groups that are legislative, quasi-judicial, or deal with budgetary tax money matters. Um, so like, you all are non-advisory because you make lots of important decisions for the town on all those fronts. Uh, we figured out Board of Abatement, Design Advisory Board, Cemetery Commission, DRB, Lister Hearings, also possibly planning. I need to look into that more. Um, the LCT is also trying to figure out who falls in what category. But basically, if you don't make any decisions, you basically just make recommendations and do nice things for the town, then you're an advisory board. 
uh, and then you can be totally remotely if you want to. If you are a non-advisory board, then you have to have. Um, let me get this right. You have to record your meetings, which is important, and you have to the COVID time of the commute remotely is over, so you have to have at least somebody in person. So you can meet hybrid, or you can meet totally in person. Um, all over the place with this. So uh, the, the, the hybrid thing is not as big a deal. That's kind of how the way we're going. Not a lot of boards have been asking to meet entirely remotely, um, so it shouldn't be too hard to get people to meet either hybrid or totally in person. The one that's bigger is recording. Uh, all of these non-advisory boards need to record their meetings, and those recordings need to be posted to the website uh, for at least 30 days after the approved minutes are posted. Um, I have already explored with YouTube. Fun fact, I've never actually posted anything on YouTube. Use it all the time, never posted anything. But I posted two select board meeting recordings that we have for fun, shared it with Kari, shared it with Barbara, everybody could get it to work. So I feel confident doing that part, but it means that we have to teach all of these boards and committees and commissions how to successfully report their meetings. Now, it doesn't have to be, it can be workout, it can be Zoom, it can be a tape recorder on the table, as long as you can figure out how to make that digital so I can put it on the website. <laughs> I'm sure there are audio and video recording apps you can use, like it's not, you must do it this way. So it doesn't have to be video, it can just be audio? It can just be audio, yes. Oh. Yeah. If you want to put them on YouTube, you can literally use YouTube to record. See, there we be, or we can just use YouTube. So I didn't even know that one. Uh, so all these are options we're going to need to figure out how everyone wants to do it, or the select board can sort of say, no, this is the way we're going to do it. That's in your wheelhouse. Um, I don't think there's anything else that's vitally important. Uh, if a body wants to meet totally in person without any digital hybrid option and someone in town says no I can't come to an in-person meeting make it accessible you got to find a way to make it accessible um, but I was advised today by the LCT that if that means you make sure that person can phone into the meeting you've done your job you don't have to make it perfectly accessible to every human being on the planet <laughs> you just have to honor that person's wish to be like hey I can't come make it accessible to me um, other than that uh, there's a few other things, uh, but nothing, nothing super pressing, I believe, on um, that one. Uh, annually, uh, the chair of the select board will be required to attend a training on open meeting law. I don't think it's any other chairs or leaders. I think it's just the select board chair, but I will update you further. Um, any questions on that one? A uh, question and then a comment, I guess. So the question, I guess, is that uh, uh, I'm assuming once we've got these recordings, they're going to be records that we then have to maintain um, as a town, which at this point isn't too much of an issue because it's either ORCA or a recording that we can put somewhere. But um, I would... Uh, I guess I would just, if we pursue something else, like uh, just recording directly to YouTube, um, just would make sure that we could, that we would then have, at any point, we would have ownership or backup of that record. So if somebody requests it, um, that that we can, we can produce it and with reasonable efficiency. Um, oh, and, as, and also- As far as I can tell, it's 30 days. And once the 30 days is up, we have no requirement to keep it because we have the minutes. Oh, okay. Meeting. So it's, okay. that's, and that's been kind of an understanding for a long time. So it's nice to have the recording, but the minutes are the thing that will live on in perpetuity. Great. Thanks for clarifying that. Uh, and then I guess the comment was that, um, uh, so we're, we're kind of working through some obligations that we've made um, to relative to our open meeting complaint. And um, uh, I just note that since there was this change to open meeting law uh, halfway through that does involve training, um, uh, it, it'd be not, rather than trying to seek a 
uh, a paid form of training, it would make a lot of sense for us to uh, get some direct guidance and training from VLTC, which is going to be more cost effective. And, uh, and, and frankly, I think it makes sense for obviously the, the chair, which is statutorily required, but uh, I'd, I'd recommend that, you know, Ari and uh, chair and vice chair uh, go, go through that training since um, vice chair could play, play a chair role. Um, in the absence of the chair, so. Yep. I would be shocked if it was required to have any sort of major expense, especially because there's been a lot of pushback from clerks saying that, you know, do we have to get an owl? Do we have to pay for Zoom? Do we, we don't even have great internet? Like this is already gonna cost towns hundreds or thousands of dollars. So I, if they did try to make it an expensive training, I, I don't think it would go well for them. Let's just put it that way. Um, so it should be a free or very inexpensive training. And yes, we would encourage as many people who are interested who'd want to go. Uh, this goes into effect July 1st. So we're gonna do our best to get it up and running and do well, but we would not be the only ones if we don't do it perfectly the first month. I feel like a lot of talents are gonna need some time to get this running smoothly. Speaking of owls and equipment, what is your current thought on the single owl and the single Zoom account? Is that something we should be seriously thinking about like now? Or wait till we sort of develop more of a plan? So Karin and I chatted about it a little bit. Um, there's Teams as well. Mm -hmm. And so we can use Teams. It's a little more complicated. People would need to get the Teams app on top of the right. Zoom app. and I. You know, we'd have to see how much pushback there was with that. Uh, at the moment, we're trying to encourage folks to meet, you know, not concurrently, partially just because we're trying to encourage folks to meet here. And if they're only meeting here, then they're not going to be overlapping on Zoom. Um, but it's definitely something that has come up. An owl is a big expense. I really hope we wouldn't have to get a second owl, particularly when the requirement is only some kind of recording and People can call it, like we have the speaker for phone participation that we don't use, so not yet, but I will certainly come and let you know if we get to a point where it's looking more likely, unless, Carter, do you have any other? Well, I was going to say, um, related to this, Tegan and I have developed a really nice one pager with instructions of how to run a Zoom meeting using the Calus account, yeah. how to use this owl, and how to uh, use the wireless monitor. Um, and we've distributed that, we've technically tested that yeah. out on a couple committees and we've now distributed that to the chairs. And I'd say, let's take that step and if people give us feedback that they want more, um, we can certainly look at it. But that, that, that seems like a big step forward for our committees. The only, yeah. the only hiccup was when planning tried to do it, they logged into Zoom and Zoom said, oh, you need to get the verification from the Gmail account attached to the Zoom. And someone needed to get into the Gmail account, but Gmail, it wouldn't take it from my laptop that I was home because it was six o'clock on a Tuesday and I didn't get it in time. Like it was one of those 18 step verification, but I think once we got it up and running and people's devices were okay, it would work. And was that problem because he was holding it at the East College Rec Center and it wasn't in this building? Why, why did he encounter that problem? I Okay. It's one of those mystery technology. Okay. I, okay. That would make sense. It's a different IP address, but I don't know. Gremlins. Or gremlins. <laughs> Just as likely. Zoom does have a fairly strict sometimes. It's strict it's about what you're sure. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. It's, we're not yeah. supposed to do this. In the time. verification process. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so that is open meeting law. Um, the next one was the ethics bill. Um, the state is feeling like the way towns do ethics, it's all too like little bitty. Everybody has their own code of conduct and their own way of doing things, and their own way of investigating, and that is not gonna fly, so now they need to create a state standard, uh, which means we all created our own uh, code of ethics or conflict of interest uh, policy for nothing. Now they're all no. Um, it will require that all members of legislative bodies and quasi-judicial bodies take an ethics training every three years. Uh, 
someone in the municipality, I'm assuming myself, will have to keep records to make sure all these people have stayed up to date on their trainings. Uh, there will need to be an ethics liaison also with the town. Again, I thought I might end up being that person. That doesn't need to be decided until January. Um, someone needs to be designated to receive complaints in the town. Someone needs to maintain records of complaints. Someone needs to establish an investigation and enforcement ordinance policy or rule. There's a lot, there's a lot to be done. Most of this doesn't have to be done right away, and we're going to wait until we get a lot more guidance and training opportunities from the LCT before we institute it. But I just thought I'd let you know that's coming down the pike. Um, any questions about that one? Uh, the last one that was on that list is a little one. It just says that we have to disclose pay in job listings now. Everybody does. So for future reference, when we're putting together job things, that needs to be done. Uh, another one I thought we might just want to mention is that dog fees paid to the state are going to increase $2 a dog. Uh, the $140,000 raised will go toward creating and staffing a uh, division of animal welfare. Um, so dogs will be $11 if they're spayed or neutered, $15 if they're intact. You know, we don't have any say in these fees. The only way we could adjust these fees is if we started doing rabies vaccination clinics, and then we could charge more if we wanted to fund those vaccination clinics. We have not chosen to because Hardwick does, Miss Montpelier does, and it never seemed necessary. Uh, Buffy's no longer with us, but she said it would be great if we wanted to do that down the road, but we don't need to talk about that tonight. Um, lots of other things. You can go down any rabbit hole you want to about bills that pass this season, but those were the ones I wanted to. I'm assuming this, uh, I don't remember. And I didn't write it down. Totally not. But I, I don't know. Not a big deal. Yeah. Here's your register, you're all set. They are. <laughs> and I'll find out when they go into effect next year. I'm sure. Yeah, we'll, we'll be very clear about advertising <laughs> next year when we put out the notices. Great. Anything else or any other questions? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Delinquent property tax. <laughs> yeah, so a few things. One is um, just wanted to share that Sandra has made really great progress on delinquent tax collection this year. In fact, as of last week, we were under $18,000 owed for, for this current tax year, and um, apparently that's quite that's, a bit better that, than That's tremendous. Typical. I mean, over yeah. that, that is remarkable. I'm sure <laughs> Rose can attest to that, too. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> And um, I won't go through it, but there, you know, there's new um, statute uh, requirements for delinquent tax collection and, and, and the abatement process as well. And a couple of the ones that are most impactful on delinquent tax would be collecting personal budget information, not unlike what the Board of Abatement is considering in terms of uh, the abatement applications, and then working with a uh, person who's delinquent on a tax payment plan based on that budget information. So, a little more complexity to it, and then the requirement for certified mail. And, and if the mail fails, then personal delivery. Um, so anyway, um, it, you know, we're still working our way th through that new statute. But I would bring to you a couple potential actions. One is, this was a request from Sandra, and I guess it's been a standing request for quite some time. It used to be that the um, decision to abate de minimis amounts of delinquent tax could only be made by the Board of Abatement, correct? So now the, the statute allows the select board to make those decisions, and uh, Sandra requested um, consideration of this. And just as a practical matter, it's probably not worth uh, the cost of the mailing and the, and, the, and the person's time to go through the effort if it's a really small amount. And so I thought it'd be good to get some data on this. So I looked at the delinquent tax report for December 1st of last year, which would have been probably the maximum amount of last year. Um, there were 17 people that owed less than $15, and 12 of them were below five, and three were between 10 and 15. So, and this is out of 94 delinquencies totaling $217,000. These 17 were probably around 100 bucks or something less hmm. than that. So, um, and, then I, and then I talked a little more with Sandra based on my conversation with Jamie and Jordan, and she said that it, there's a fair bit of um, variance from year to year. There are some 
similar, same names that pop up every year. She's not really sure what the reasons are. Um, and she pointed out that if, you know, if we were going to go this route of, sort of this blanket authorization to abate, you could do it after the first mailing or the first two mailings um, to provide the person a chance to make good, but just not you know required when you get to that you know, those final stages where it really starts to be time consuming. So that's that's the request um, specifically for 15, for anything less than fifteen for this calendar year, and then we would look at uh, creating a policy. The policy committee could, could take a look at something that's more on the way. And 15 is a proposal, obviously less than 15. So is the proposal 15 after a mailing or two mailings, or? That, that's not the way it's written in here, but that, that's certainly reasonable, as Sandra pointed that yeah. out, actually. Yeah. I, I would support that. Yeah. Thoughts. I would um, wouldn't want them to be concurrent. I mean, if it's two years in a row, I'd want to do something about it. Interesting. Yeah, that. So, uh, uh, can everybody still hear me? I guess I'm getting weird feedback, but um, sure. that was kind of my concern. You know, I I fully respect and appreciate where Sandra's coming from on this recommendation. You know that the increased cost of complying with the new legislation um, starts to kind of change the calculus for the ta for the town to go after trying to get um, these smaller dollar amounts. But as we raise kind of what the blanket abatement price point is, uh, I get concerned about just kind of habitual kind of gamification. Well, if they're just going to write off um, fifteen dollars every year, then I'll pay the town fifteen dollars less than I owe, and I'd get it forgiven. You know, and that assumes a lot, uh, obviously, in a small community. But, um, but I would like to see us adding some more structure to tracking, like who who the individuals are that are that are falling whatever below that, so that if we're not rolling into kind of a concurrent, um situation so that if the, the delinquent tax collector is bringing a slate of uh a slate of abatements under a particular threshold that that has been taken into consideration and that i i don't know i don't know how we define that process but i will say from my limited experience at this point a lot of these instances are people pay their taxes a little bit too late and so the late assessment got on there they thought they paid it on time or thought it wasn't assessed and it's just the late fee that they didn't pay or the late and it's not people not paying their taxes it's it came in a few days late and they didn't know there was five dollars more on it not people avoiding taxes so i'm wondering if rather than set, putting into a delinquent tax policy that will automatically abate delinquent taxes under $15, that the delinquent tax collector will come to the select board every March. If taxes are due in November and she wants two or three months to try to collect that money, so she'll come to the select board each March and say these are the delinquent taxes and make a recommendation to possibly abate those under $15 this year, but not make it be a standing automatic abatement, but to re review it and consider it every year in March or April. So the way it is now, except now it's brought to the Board of Abatement. It's just brought to the Board of Abatement. Now we can bring it to the select board. Yeah, I, I, I like that. I think that um, these are these are the kind of things that we can work into a policy. So I, it sounds like we've got a couple of things um, we'll Try to capture some some of that dialogue or all of that dialogue in a policy for the future now that we have this kind of new authorization uh capacity as a select board um and that can that can be a policy that kind of governs the interaction between the select board and the tax collector but and then tonight we've got the authorization uh to abate the anything under 15 dollars for this particular calendar year, is that right? That, that was the proposal that would, you know, basically yeah. take care of anything in 
come December 1st, we wouldn't have to worry about, about those, but then we have a policy after that. Some different policy. And that could be after second mailing. <coughs> yeah. And if, if we every year we keep track of who got abated, we can see if there's a pattern of repetitive people who are constantly year after year after year, $15 or less delinquent. Yep. So I'd uh, I'd make a motion uh, to authorize a delinquent uh, tax collector uh, to abate delinquent property taxes for the amount less than fifteen dollars uh, for the calendar year of twenty twenty four. Um, Great. Okay. Any uh, yeah. Before. I have a question why it says calendar year, and I'm not questioning it, I'm just curious. Educate me. We typically do everything in a fiscal year, and we're getting ready to send out tax bills in August of 2024. So why does it say calendar year yeah, 2024? I think, I think your thinking was just to take care of the, those really small ones at, at the beginning of the process, which is, is, not, is not consistent with her suggestion that, that you made recently about um, after the second mailing. So I, I'm not sure how wedded she is actually to the calendar year. I, I mean, is she, is what she's really asking for right now is to abate anybody who today is $15 or less, or I actually think it says under 15. So if you're $15, you don't yeah, get abated. I, I, I under think that's the bigger priority. Today yeah. to be, be abated, but come the new tax bill, if, if it's still in the calendar year of 2024, it doesn't seem right to be abating people who are have less than $15 in November. On next year's bill. Yeah, on well, next year's bill. Thank you for finishing my statement. Yeah. Yeah, so I will entertain a friendly <laughs> amendment to my proposal to make it for fiscal year 2024, and then we can revisit this uh, the next time. Perfect. We did a bait under five dollars right previously. Yeah. Does anybody want to second that motion with the friendly amendment? I will second the friendly amendment. All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Great. Thanks. So then the second part was about the salary for the dual income tax collector. If you remember the budgeting process, we re reduced it from eleven thousand to ten thousand. I think Sandra has um, looked at this new, new requirements in the statute and said, eh, maybe it'd be better at 11. <laughs> She'd be more comfortable. And um, I would suggest that's probably reasonable. And also just keep in mind that we did increase the, the penalty rate from 3% to 8%. He's a town. That was what on a town meeting. So if, if the amounts hold, then we'll more than cover the cost of delinquent tax collection in the coming year, which hasn't been the case in the past, so okay. it won't cost us in that sense. I am happy to make a motion to increase to 11,000 based on all of this. I'll second. Makes sense to me. All in favor? Aye. 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 Do, do you need to make, an, make that an effective date? Uh, well, this would be for the fiscal year. You know, 2025. Okay, starting July 1st. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Great. All right, thanks. Our five. Okay, so this is really just a um, counting change of sorts. Remember, our, our business, the American Rescue Plan, mm -hmm. the town of Calus received $470,000. So, Allocate to different things. Uh, we realized when we were doing our year end report this year that we had improperly um, obligated, is the formal term, uh, monies to reserve funds, specifically the highway uh, capital equipment fund and the town hall reserve fund, and that's not a valid use. So the uh, fix is to, is a three step process. One is to rescind those particular um, obligations, and then adopt the resolution that's in, in there, um, which I think in some cases you adopted a resolution 
that like this, but this is the, this resolution is the format that the ECLT, um, the LCT um, recommends. And, but basically, send those those funds to the general fund, uh, and then from there, obligate those funds from the general fund back to the Highway Department Equipment Fund and the Town Hall Reserve Funds. It, and just keep in mind, this money's already been spent. So this is really just a reporting and accounting change so that we're ready for our single audit um, and, and can prove that we spent the money properly. That makes sense. <laughs> Any questions on that? No. No. Then uh, it's three separate motions. So I would entertain a motion to rescind the actions of March 25th, January 8th, and December 11th, as outlined in Kari's document. Oh. All second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. The second motion would be to approve the resolution to obligate and expend the coronavirus state and local fiscal recovery fund funds for $80,901.19 for the purpose of municipal workforce resolution for the period of February 4th, 2024 through March 31st, 2024. And that motion would include authorize, is it everyone or one signature? Um, oh, that's a good question. I don't think I brought it. Oh, shoot. Um, well, I'll look it up. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Authorize the signing of yeah, please. the resolution. So move. <laughs> Jordan did that? No, Jordan. no. Chris can have it. It's, it's fair. We've got to spread it around. Okay, Chris. Jordan can second it. I'll second it, yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And the third would be to allocate $80,000 from the general fund to the Highway Department Equipment Fund and $901.19 from the general fund to the Town Hall Reserve Fund. And I'm sorry, Kari, you said this was consistent with what had already been expended. It's already been expended. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Second. All in favor? Hi. 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 Great. All right, thank you. Thank you for clearing that up. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for cut and paste. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll need to get your signatures on that resolution next time I forgot to print Yeah, it. okay. Uh, computer purchase. Sorry. Um, we have a number of devices that are overdue for being replaced and I was just coming to you all to sort of get your okay on replacing those. Uh, it's three desktops and three laptops. Uh, our tech company has recommended that they be replaced because they're starting to go old. It's the uh, Cemetery Commission laptop, the Highway Department's laptop, uh, the one they keep at the garage. The laptop we keep in the vault for deed researchers and folks to do deed research is the Lister's desktop, Barbara's desktop, and my desktop. Uh, and there's a quote in your folder that includes the RV Tech purchasing the computers, getting all the gear and all the software and all the licenses, and setting it all up for us. I know that we have, and this all comes out of the reserve tech reserve, tech reserve, reserve that we have designed specifically for things like this and the server, which will probably be released maybe this year. We could probably stretch it to next year, but right. Yeah. Does this leave enough for that? Like, are we? I know that's coming up soon. Kari, do you are know we, how much is in? The um, are we setting was, ourselves up? We for, my Let me just check. Real quick. When you say server, do you guys have a physical server? We do have a physical server, yeah. Because the internet was so terrible, that was the better choice, and they're still mm -hmm. recommending it now, at least they were when I talked to them last year. So we'll see yep. if when I talk to them this year, they recommend the same. 
The reserve fund currently has a balance of 23449 It's getting iffy. <laughs> and how much are we putting in for the next fiscal year or the end of this half year? <laughs> uh, I think it was nine. How much is this for? I'm trying to remember. <laughs> okay, since we, we looked at all this stuff. And this total so bill this on is this proposal is what? 9,267? 8,484? There you go. No. It's quote summary payment no, option. 9,267. Yeah, I don't know what the difference is. Think. Oh, because of the service. Yeah, 9,267, what did I say? 9,267. So it would leave us fourteen one eighty two. Yeah. Well, we have a, a nine thousand dollar allocation from this year, next year's budget coming. Nine more coming. Yeah. So, so, back, to so back to twenty three. And is that? And the server you're looking. I am trying to remember if I can. I might have it in here somewhere, but I don't know that I do. Uh, I feel like it was a. It was a big ticket item. Right. Um, yeah, user usually a server replacement like ours is going to be somewhere between twenty and thirty. Yeah, that was more like what I thought. Um, should we table this? Maybe we should table it. Research? This is one of the, when when you all were budgeting, you asked if we could do less. I think that that's probably happened the last few years. Yeah, I would not be yep. surprised. Uh, no, I explicitly remember saying that myself. <laughs> um, so what was the replacement uh, proposal for uh, the server? Are they trying to, they're trying to recommend doing that for FY25? Yep, they, it's, they said this year or next year, we'll, we'll see, they left it up in the air. Um, Does the town pay for Microsoft 365 or do you guys use the free version of the system? We pay, pay for it in various tiers. So the select board and the office staff have the highest, <clears> and then <throat> some of the other folks have lower ones. Right. Uh, I don't know if this is already discussed or thought about. If you could stretch it out, would it be possible to back up the entire server to one drive just in case the server were to crash while you waited a year, or is the internet still not? I don't know what the current situation is. I don't know. I, they do a backup. Mm -hmm. So they back up our server every however often yep. uh, on another server. Got it. Um, is it nightly? I think it's nightly, yeah. Yeah, so the bigger the bigger issue is that our server isn't um, and hasn't been for a while a uh, virtual server. Uh, it's been a physical one. And, um, and we might be able to entertain a cheaper service implementation um, now that we have really reliable uh, fiber. Uh, is, is certainly my understanding. Lay understanding is that uh, it it has made the backup a lot more efficient. And so there, it may be cheaper to replace our server or update our server. We might have some more options on the table uh, now that we've got. Um, now that we have a fiber reliably reaching the center of town to our resources, but I think also given the complexity of our uh, records, um, a permanent permanent machine may may always kind of trump trump the virtual server element. Um, uh, and I will say, at the moment, all the all the devices that are working. Fine. The one in the device is, yeah. I mean, the one in the vault is not great. It does the trick, it's, but it's real slow and clunky. Everything else seems to be working fine. As far as I know, no one's complained to me about anything. So Wait a minute, it's my <laughs> That's not the computer's fault, uh, Barbara. <laughs> my other question yeah, would be... Oh yeah, did it, well, did it, it was the first, I think it just knew we were talking about it. Um, are, are there I, some that are better, working better than others that could maybe be reallocated to one of the uses that doesn't use it as much or doesn't use it as hard. So we do also interim. have the treasurer's computer because 
Kari got the computer that was living in here when he joined the staff, and then Sandra gave back her laptop. So we do have Sandra's laptop, and I have thought about swapping that one into the vault since that one still seems to work fine and it's newer. Um, so we do have the one, but everything else is in use. I was just thinking if like, you know, I don't know any of who's what, but like if Kari's laptop was better than what the cemetery commission uses and they don't use it as much. Yeah. If we got Kari a new one, could Kari's go to, you know, swap it can, around? The problem is a lot of us use Nimric software mm -hmm. and a lot of other, so you got to get in there and somebody's got to change all the software. It's, it's a to do, you know, it's not like the two of you switching laptops right. because you both have office and you're fine. It's, it, right. it's kind of a pain in the face. So this may be a really stupid question, but I'm going to ask it anyway. If we decided we were at the point we're ready to go to the cloud, do you still need a server if you go to the cloud? You know, a cloud-based server. That's what Jordan was yeah. referring to. But that's a subscription fee, and the costs are about the same from what Ruben told me a year ago. You're already paying for it. What do you mean? Because you have Microsoft licenses. We are. And so that's another thing. We didn't have that when Ruben and I talked last year. Mm. So they've been... Every time it's been hard to get on the phone lately. I think a lot of people are on vacation and they have a new person, and it's been a little frustrating. Um, but I could probably talk to them and just get the label in. Now that we have CV Fiber, and now that we're on the office accounts, see what would be the best possible way to go on the server. Would it be reasonable to table this tonight, yeah. learn more about the server, and revisit it in two weeks? Acceptable. I will do my best to get them <clears throat> to meet before them. Yes. <laughs> Great. Um, Curtis Pond Dam, uh, not a huge number of updates except that it's happening. There's been a flurry of activity. A new um, electric pole went in. All utilities except consolidated have moved their lines. Uh. Um, <laughs> I'm working. Uh, with a consumer protection person to get consolidated on board. Uh, Larry's not stressed about it. Um, we'll get it up. And so the big thing is we have the ground bake breaking on um, week from tomorrow. I um, hope folks will come. Barbara and Kari and I and some CPA folks are have been working on all the logistics. Should be a really fun celebratory event. Um, and then probably right around then, we'll start seeing large equipment show up. Um, the mm -hmm. plants we had to transplant are underway. We're meeting with the botanist Wednesday to do an update and get signed off on that. Um, Pre-construction meeting. Pre-construction meeting is Thursday. You'll be at that. Um, I'll be at that. All the like dam safety and contractor and engineers and some other permit issuers will be there. Um, and then we'll be Sorry. ready to start. It's yeah. actually happening. Um, yeah, I think, I think that's all I have. There can be some. Uh, I have a quick question. Yeah. Or a two-part. Uh, this has probably already been addressed. I know that I missed a lot of meetings, especially before this whole project started. Uh, but for on the emergency services aspect, we have a dry hydrant on Camp Road, right up the line of camp and going. True. Um, are you aware of any possible impact to the level, the water level where that hydrant is going to be? And are you aware? of what access to that road is going to be like when construction starts. So the contractor has committed, because that's a uh, dead-end road. Right. Camp Road does not technically go all the way through. Yep. Um, the plan is to keep the road open at all times. He said there will be times that, you know, there's 20 right. minutes that a cement truck is yep. unloading or whatever. Um, but the road will generally remain open. Mm -hmm. um, 
the water level, so the coffer dam goes from south of that dock, yep. like just barely south of that dock, over to the point where that birch tree is. Water level in the cove will go away, and that's all getting dug out. Water level pond side of the coffer dam, the, the permit has us leaving it at what they call average lowest annual pond level. Okay. Um, it's, it was quite low last week. Mm -hmm. It came up about five inches with this current storm. Um, I'd expect it to go down probably 10 inches from where it is now. And I haven't, I don't, I don't know how deep that. Yeah, I don't offhand either, but I will. So we have, Woodbury has their business meeting coming up next week. I will get you the agenda mark. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, and I'll just bring it up to our meeting and I'll have a few of us just go over and get a rough idea of how deep it is. I'm sure it's going to be fine. Yep. Um, just if we need to, if there's any chance that we think we need to get it lower. We're right. Work with you guys. That way, we're not in each other's way or something. Yeah. 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 Just keep me posted, and yeah, if anything you need, let me know. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Good. Good call. Any other reports? Tegan, anything else? Um, I have a few things. One, <laughs> I wanted to report we did have an injury last week on Thursday afternoon. Uh, one of our road crew members or one of our highway department employees, I'll protect his privacy, but he's doing well. He was, um, it was a chipper accident. It was the only other injury that happened um, since I've been on board was all, also involving a chipper. So it's a mm. dangerous piece of equipment. Yeah. And uh, ho hopefully that was a good learning experience for us, but he's, he's doing well. Okay. He didn't lose any fingers. That's good. Right, right. Um, then uh, yesterday's weather event, the biggest impact that we're aware of is, I'm, I'm certain of this, is on Elmsley Road, just a matter of feet from here. The, at the very bottom, the stream uh, jumped the bank and um, accessed the low point um, on Elmsley Road and washed it out. And mm. came pretty close to um, taking out this, this building, this, uh, this home here. Mm. Um, so a pretty scary situation. Um, we hope to have the road reopened tomorrow or Wednesday, and the plan is to harden the stream bank, bringing in um, uh, stone, you know, large stone, to, to make sure it gets back into its channel and stays there. Uh, and then we're um, requesting a hydrologic study to potentially upgrade the culvert that's there because the water was flowing through the culvert, you, you, um, but just not enough. Um, so, and this is this is the same situation happened last year uh, okay. in the same location. So, um, we definitely need a better solution. Um, and then the other uh, significant impact that I'm aware of is a uh, number ten pond, and we're going to be replacing our culvert on um, that road tomorrow. That road's passable, but the culvert needs to be replaced. Um, and then on the positive side, we did receive the next FEMA reimbursement today, $151,000. So that feels really good. And then also, um, just before she left, Anna Tulin applied for a smaller grant, $3,000 from the Central Vermont um, Solid Waste Management District for tire collection. Mm -hmm. And we, we received yeah. approval for that. Great. So um, awesome. we're going to figure out a way to collect people's tires. So, I think her vision of it was to use this as a seed, but also collect a modest fee so that can be um, some funds for next year's tire collection and just keep this moving forward. And the, the solid waste district like that idea. So they're going to fund this first one round. Great. How much was it? $3,000. That's it. That's awesome. Um, Jordan, anything on Chad? Uh, no, not not presently, but um, probably plan some time to uh, touch on that for sure uh, by the next meeting. Great. Anything else? Meeting adjourned. <laughs> I'll make a motion to adjourn. Look, Jamie, you got us almost right back on track. Reined mm -hmm. it in there.
<laughs> we need a second and a vote. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.